Hi, this video is about why we are losing our digital information and about what UNESCO's Persist project does about it. Before, we lived in the analog society. And in the analog society, the information we had was basically a pile of books. But then we moved to the digital information society, in which there's a huge amount of digital documents constantly being produced. And this shift had two major consequences for our access to information. In the analog society, it was enough to have two eyes to access information because we could directly read the books. But in the digital information society, we need a computer to access information and we need software. Our access to information has become technology dependent. And secondly, in the analog information society, the amount of information was relatively small so that it was practically doable to make a selection of it and to classify the selection so that we could search for books. But in the digital information society, there's so much information that we don't even know where to begin our selection. And this has a consequence, namely digital amnesia, the risk that we lose our digital information. And there are two reasons for that. The first one is related to technology, which constantly evolves. And because of that, old digital documents can no longer be read simply because we no longer have the old computers and software that we needed to read it, so we lose access. The second reason why we lose access to digital documents is because in the digital information society, there's too much information to keep access to everything. And you might think that the solution is to store this all on servers and hard disks, because technically that's possible. But in practice, if you want to keep access to documents, you need to be able to search them. And to be able to search them, you need to make a smaller selection of documents because you can't search everything. And you need to classify that smaller selection so that you're able to search for documents by keywords, for example. And as the digital information society is relatively young, and as the amount of information we produce is pretty huge, we're not very good at that yet. Now, why is it a problem to lose digital information? There are at least four reasons for that. The first is that we would lose value. Because imagine the medical checks that would have to be redone if we would lose our medical records, or imagine the mistakes that our companies would start making if they would lose access to their evaluation reports and the recommendations that they paid for. And there are hundreds of examples like this. Secondly, losing digital information would mean losing democracy. Because citizens, in order to hold their governments accountable, they need online access to reports about how their taxpayers' money was spent and what the results were. Thirdly, losing digital information means losing our grip on the future. Because losing access to data about climate, about our economy, about our health, would also mean that we no longer see developments that are happening coming our way, like climate change, and we would no longer be able to prepare for it. Fourthly, losing digital information would also mean that we would lose our grip on the past. Because think of diaries and letters from the 17th century. They can still be read directly by our eyes, but the posts we publish on Facebook and the emails that we write to each other, which are the digital heritage of the future, may no longer be accessible in the future simply because we no longer have the old software to read them, or we might not even have kept them. Now, what is the solution for digital amnesia? How can we keep access to our digital information? That solution is called Persist. And Persist does a couple of things. First of all, it brings the partners together in one room who deal with our digital information. It's the ICT industry, it's the memory institutions, and the governments. The ICT industry, they produce the software we need to produce digital information. Our memory institutions then preserve that digital information and they keep it accessible. And the governments they support and facilitate the production of digital information and the preservation of it. Now, what Persist does 
it creates a dialogue between these three parties to ask them to work together to find solutions to keep our digital information accessible in the future. Let's look at the ICT industry first. It's in their interest to produce new software all the time because that's good for business, but it's not good for digital heritage and for digital information and for our access to it. So Persist asks the ICT industry to maintain a minimum continuity between old software and new software to make it easier for memory institutions to keep digital information accessible. Now let's look at memory institutions. They need to preserve digital information and to keep it accessible. So Persist produces a platform of old software that is needed to read old documents, like documents in WordPerfect, for example, or documents that are written on floppy disks. Secondly, it produces a guideline for the selection of digital documents. It helps memory institutions to decide what to keep and what not to keep, which is very difficult. And then lastly, governments, they need to learn from these best practices so that they can integrate them in national digital preservation strategies. And these strategies can then be used to support and facilitate the production of digital information in such a way that memory institutions have an easier job to preserve it and to keep it accessible for the future. Thank you for your, for your attention.